Okay, welcome back. This is the companion video to the DXO Mark video. And what I'd like to cover in this video is the not so much the sensor size as in full frame versus APS-C, but the size of the actual photo sites on the sensor. So it's those little light collecting buckets. That, that's what I would like to talk about today and how DXO Mark is driving manufacturers to keep reducing the size of the photo site and it's really degrading image quality. Okay, so let's talk about that now. So this is Greek letter mu. When you combine it with uh, M, this is micro, okay, Greek letter, in, in this context it means micro, micrometer, okay, or micrometer, it's the same as a micron. So we measure these photocytes in microns, okay? And mathematically it's represented by 1 times 10 to the negative 6th power, or fractionally 1 over 1 million, 1 millionth of a meter, okay? And that's how we measure the actual photocytes or pixels or whatever you want to call them. And there are, you know, many millions of these on the sensor, and they're very small. So, let's talk about one of the most coveted cameras in all of photography. And that is the Nikon D700, okay? It's, it's a favorite among wedding shooters. Uh, and I'll tell you why it's coveted. So obviously the first, the surface answer, the surface answer is image quality. It is absolutely known for its stellar, beautiful image quality. But there's something under, there's, there, in this warp and woof, there's even another base layer operating under just image quality. What gives it its image quality? Image quality is the size of the photo sites on the sensor. So let's cover now some of the various cameras out there and the sizes of their photo sites and what lends uh, what lends these to image quality okay so the first one let me start out first by saying these are all to scale so instead of doing it in microns so let's start with the D700 each edge is 8.5 microns but I drew it 8.5 inches so that everything is in inches and it's to scale so it's relative to scale but if you really want to get technical, so there are 25,400 microns in an inch. So every box you see here, these photo sites, are really in reality 25,400 times bigger than what they are on the actual wafer or the sensor. Okay? But again, I drew them so that, number one, you could see them. But I maintain the scale so that they're relative in scale to each other. Okay, and also let's cover pixel pitch. Okay? Pixel pitch, by definition, is the center of one photo site to the center of the next photo site. And uh, so you've got to take into account the border, the little seam or border that runs between the two photo sites. Okay? And again, just for, just for simplicity, I'm just using these measurements as the actual size because it's close. It's ballparkish, right? The border is kind of negligible. So for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to use these measurements, even though they're technically pixel pitch, I'm going to use them as the relative size of the photo site because it's very close, okay? So let's start with the D700 from, from Nikon, an absolute favorite among photographers. It's a 12.1 megapixel uh, 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 sensor, full frame 12.1 megapixels, which is incredibly low pixel count, okay? And so you can see here, the, the photo site is 8.5 microns by about 8.5 microns for a total of 72.3 square microns on the photo site, which is huge. Okay, in, in photography, that is just ridiculously huge. And what that means is that the image quality is beautiful. And here's why. So let's say you have a bucket, okay? You have a bucket and you want to put the bucket out in a rainstorm. So you have a big, big bucket, okay, and then you have a smaller bucket. You put them both out in the rain, and you leave them out there, say, 10 minutes or whatever. When you bring them back in, okay, the bigger bucket's going to have more water in it, okay? More water is going to fall in the bigger bucket than it is the smaller bucket. There'll be more drops in the big bucket. It's the same principle when you deal with sensors in photography, okay? The larger the photo site, okay, the larger, let's call them photo buckets, right? Because that's what they are. They're a bucket. They're catching photons. Instead of rain or water, they're catching the light. They're catching photons. So when you have these big photo sites, it's very easy for the, for the photo site to collect light. 
and we, when you get into signal to noise ratio, okay? When you have a large photo site, it's all signal. There's no noise because the thing is so huge, it's easy for it to collect photons, okay? And collecting all those photons means a nice, crisp quality image because there's no noise. It's, it's all signal, okay? So that's the D700. Let's move up now to the D4 which is still the D4 and the DF share the same sensor. The old hipster, or it's, it looks like an old, like a, an FE. I shot with an FM2. It still looks like, a, an, you know, the older FE, FM series of Nikon cameras, the old film, film cameras. So the DF and the D4 share the same sensor. It's 7.3 microns by 7.3 microns for a total surface area of 53.3 square microns. Okay, now, this is, this is one of the best cameras in the industry, along with, I've included here the Canon uh, 1DX. Actually, I have D1X. I, that's wrong. It should be 1DX. Okay, the, the Nikons are ranked 13 and 14, respectively. Okay, either the DF and the D4, or it's reversed. It doesn't matter, but they're number 13 and 14 in camera bodies. The sensors, they're, they're not, not the body itself, but the sensor, 13 and 14. The Canon, it's 18.1 megapixel, which is still a nice low count, huge photo sites. And as I said in the previous video, it's ranked 35. It's ridiculous, okay? So that's the D4. Now let's move on to the D750, the new one by Nikon, the one I bought just recently. It's 6 microns by 6 microns, 24.3 megapixel sensor for a total surface area of 36 square microns. Now we're already at the point, now this is really critical. Just going from 8.5 microns to 6 microns along one edge, but look at look what happens when you square it, right? Because to get area you square it, right? You square one dimension by the other to get area. When you square this on the D700 you get 72.3 square microns. The D750, 6 microns, you square it, you get 36. It's double. 36 times 2 is 72. So just going from the D700 to the D750, both full frame cameras, each photo, the photo site is twice, it has twice the surface area. Okay, that, that's, that's a big difference. Two times the, the surface area of the, the bucket, the photo site, collecting the light is twice as big. Okay, this is why the D700 is coveted in the industry. And it's a camera from 2008. Okay, it's seven-year-old technology, and people would, you know, people, it's, it's, right now you can still get them new, they, some places still have new, and they go for $3,300. Okay, this is a camera from 2008, it's going for $3,300 new today, as of this recording in 2015. This camera, I just got my camera gray market. It's, uh, it's actually a European, it was made for the, on my UPC in the box, it says EU, D750 EU. European Union, gray market, $1,600, brand new, $1,600, $3,300, so I could have gotten two D750s, current technology, brand new technology, I could have gotten two for the price of what a D700 is going for, and I'm going to get back to this at the end about why, where these camera makers are going with these small these small photo sites, okay, and it's important, I'll wrap it up, I'll bring it home at the end of the video. Okay, let's go through the D3100 APS-C. This is our first APS-C entry. 5 microns by 5 microns. It's a 14.2 megapixel sensor for a total surface area of 25 square microns. Now we get in back to the full frame. Now we're getting into the big 36.3 megapixel D810. 4.9 microns across on each axis, 24 square microns. D5100, 16.2 megapixel sensor. 4.8 microns by 4.8, 23 square microns. Now you can only see there's, they're, they're going by one. 25 square, 24 square microns, 23 square microns between the 3100, 810, and 5100. So they're very close in each one's photo. Even though it's APS-C full frame, APS-C, the actual photo sites are very close in size between the three cameras. This is the new one from, from Canon. I said yesterday it was rumored, and that's my fault. I should have done some more research on that because I just don't stay abreast of Canon products. I'm just not a Canon guy, but that was my fault. I should have been better prepared for the video. So I did my research today. It's out. 
the, actually, it's some people have it. It's it's not for sale yet on Amazon, as far as I can see. It's, it says it's not been released yet. But anyways, it's called the the 5DS and the 5DS R, which is the no uh, low pass filter, right? Just like the Nikon D7100, there's no filter on it. And same with the D800, D800E. The E model was the one I believe with no low pass filter. Okay, so I'm digressing a little bit. But it's a 50.6 megapixel sensor, 4.2 microns along each axis for a total of 17.6 square microns. Okay, now we're getting to the point where this is actually the D700's photo sites. Okay, now are four times. Okay, so we went from 72 to 36, and now we're down to 17. Okay, so the photo sight on a D700 is four times the surface area light gathering ability than the Canon 5DS. Four times is great, okay? And then we come down to the D7100. It's 3.9 mic. It's the first one that breaks the four micron threshold. 3.9 along each axis. 24.1 megapixel sensor for a total of 15.2 square microns. And I'll be honest with you, I was never, I have the D7100, and I've never really been happy with the camera. I just haven't. And this is why, because the photo sites are small. And I'll tell you what happens here in just a moment. Okay, so let me erase this. Bear with me. So here's what happens. Two things actually happen, and, it, and it's really, it's a really amazing to, to see what happens here. Now this is anecdotal, it's nothing, it's not hard science, but I've been in photography for a very long time. I have countless hours at Flickr, that's, that's what I do is my pastime, I just study photos. Study photos, study photos, that's all I do. Okay, in my, in my opinion, this is the threshold. This is the point of demarcation for two things. It's, it happens at the five micron level, almost exactly at the five micron level. So anything that's uh, greater than or equal to five microns, and then you have less than five microns. Okay, so the first thing is, is your glass. Okay, let's write consumer glass and then pro glass. So when you stay above five microns or at five microns, you can still get good image quality with consumer level glass, okay? It'll resolve the image is what I'm saying. So the photo sites are large enough so that when you put consumer grade glass on it, the light can be delivered through the glass and onto the sensor, okay? It delivers as a delivery vehicle, okay? A lens, consider the lens like a conveyor belt where the light, it's like a conveyor belt delivering light to the sensor or it's just, you can just, it's a transmission vehicle, right? It's, it transmits light to the sensor. When you have average consumer grade glass at or above five microns, you can get good image quality. But what happens is when you go below five microns, you depart consumer glass, and now you have to put pro glass on the camera to get good image quality. So here's my point here. Again, I'm going back to DxOMAR. If a, if a person buys a $500 body, okay, and it has the 24.1 megapixel sensor, like the D7100 and some of the D3 series, D5, you know, such and such, D3300, D5300, whatever. They have this basically the same sensor, 24 megapixels. What happens is, so what's the point? So what's the point of buying a $500 body if I now have to mate it with a $1,000 lens? So let's talk about the cost. A consumer level lens is somewhere between $200 and six hundred dollars. This is consumer glass. Pro glass is about twelve hundred to twenty two hundred dollars for pro glass. Now so here's here's my point. If I have a five hundred dollar body, I can't put consumer glass on it. It won't resolve. Okay, the photo sites are so small it won't resolve the image. I have to move to pro glass. So again so when you think of marketing Okay, I want to make a camera for the working man and working woman. And I was doing that. I'm Nikon. Let's say I'm Nikon. I was doing that when I was making the D3000, D5000, D3100. Because I could buy a $400 body. I could make it with a $200 lens, 
$400 lens. I could get spectacular image quality. So I was serving the working man and working woman. I was delivering them a kit that stayed within the realm of affordability and delivered excellent image quality. Now, DxO Mark comes along, and again, I said they passively forced you know, the camera manufacturers to go smaller and smaller with the photo sites because their sole, sole unit of measurement is lines of resolution. And the only way you get lines of resolution is you keep driving up the pixel count, okay, more and more megapixels on the sensor. So what happens is an average working man or working woman, an enthusiast or a hobbyist, okay, not a pro shooter, an enthusiast or a hobbyist, now they have a $500 body and they, to, get, to get that thing to perform, they now have to mate it with a, a lens that costs anywhere from $1,200 to $2,200. Okay, so they have defeated their whole marketing campaign. So they've left the realm of affordability for a hobbyist shooter. Okay, so the hobbyist shooter says, well, I got a $500 body, and now to get it to perform, I need a $1,000 lens or a $1,200 lens. Okay, so again, they've defeated their own purpose. Another thing that happens here, so two things happen. One is the point of demarcation between consumer glass and pro glass, and the other one is uh, handheld. You can still shoot handheld at or above 5 microns. When you get below 5 microns, the images really are very susceptible to image blur. Okay, that's one of the, one of the, the mysteries of photo site size. It's the threshold is 5 microns. Stay at or above 5 microns. You can shoot handheld all day. You go below 5, you got to throw the camera on a tripod. Or if you get in real close, like I shoot when I shoot women, if I get in real close, I can see that the face is blurry. Okay? And that is, and I have real steady hands, but the, the photo sites are so small at 3.9 microns on each axis that the slightest, and I mean the very slightest movement, is noticeable and you get a blurry image. Which means you have to put, so if you want sharp images, you have to put the camera on a tripod. Which now means is that the, the tactile, tactile feedback okay, of holding a camera is kind of critical to photographers, right? Especially to me, I love the sense of, of holding a camera in my hand. I have my strobe set. The strobes are already, I've already metered my light. The strobes are stationary because it's off camera flash, right? Yeah, I would have to keep adjusting my flash if I'm holding it. Studio strobes on C stands or light stands, they're stationary. The light is set. So you can move in and out, up, down. You move all around and you're handheld. Okay, and that tactile experience is really critical to photographers. You don't want to lose that tactile, tactile experience as a photographer. But again, DxO Mark did no we higher, higher, higher. Okay, this war they're they're fueling this war, this never-ending war of smaller photo sites. So not only has DxO Mark caused caused us to go from consumer glass to pro glass on our bodies, they've also now okay through their ridiculousness they've we've gone from handheld photography to putting our cameras on a tripod. Okay, so there have been two devastating effects of DxO Mark's constant push for smaller and smaller photo sites.